FAMIA, or Failure Mode and Effects Analysis, is an organized, systematic approach for performing failure analysis on your product, system, or process. When performing a failure mode and effects analysis, you consider all possible or potential failure modes, evaluate their associated risk factors based on their level of severity, and then determine ways to prevent, mitigate, or detect those failures. In this example, we will see how design FMEA can be applied to a very critical function of your coffee maker, dripping hot water onto the coffee grounds. The basic goal for our FMEA will be to analyze how this function can fail and what we can do to mitigate that failure. To do this, we're going to define the function, determine the failure modes, analyze the effects, describe the causes, establish the recommended actions, and implement the recommended actions. We will review each step in detail. We will use our FMEA worksheet to document our FMEA data in this example. Our function will be hot water is dripped over the coffee grounds. When defining a function, we have to be specific. This allows us to narrow our focus and break down our FMEA. Now we can define many failure modes for this function. Again, we'll focus on one for now. The arm is not positioned over the coffee grounds. At this point, you can see where we're heading. We're not getting our coffee, but let's formalize this with FMEA effects. We could list many effects. We'll just examine one for simplicity. Coffee is not prepared. Next, we have to assign a severity to this effect. Severity is one of the components used to assess the risk levels of our FMEA items. Depending on your caffeine addiction, you may think this is a severity of 10 because you can't imagine your morning without coffee. We'll stick to the more objective rules of severity ranking. Using the standard AIAG severity levels, we will assign our effect a severity level of 8, which indicates that this effect involves a loss in the primary function of the coffee maker. Note that we will address the revised severity later in this example. Now we have to analyze our potential causes for this failure mode. User did not move arm over the coffee grounds before turning on coffee maker. Next, there are two critical values we have to populate for the RPN calculation, occurrence and detection. For occurrence, we'll assign a value of 5 because this happens occasionally. For detection, we'll assign a value of 10 because we do not have any method to detect this cause when it occurs. Once detection is entered, Reliance FMEA automatically calculates RPN, or risk priority number. We can see that it's 400, or 8 times 5 times 10, and a high risk item noted by the red color in this example FMEA. As with revised severity, we'll address revised occurrence, revised detection, and revised RPN a bit later in this example. The last portion of FMEA is to define and execute recommended actions to reduce severity or occurrence or improve detection of a FMEA line item, especially a high-risk one. This is a critical portion of the FMEA process and allows you to continuously improve your product. For this failure mode and cause, what can we do to make sure that the arm is positioned over the coffee grounds before making coffee? Could we update the user manual for the coffee maker? Could we put a sticker on the arm? In the first case, we know people don't read user manuals. In the second case, it's likely the sticker would peel and fall off after time due to the heat inside of the coffee maker. So neither of these solutions appears to be a good recommended action. Could there be a way to force the arm into place when the lid is closed? Let's consider this further. What if we added a flat piece of plastic to the lid of the coffee maker that pushed the arm into position when the lid is closed? This would force the arm into the correct position any time the lid is closed. It's safe to assume the user is more likely to remember to close the lid of the coffee maker than to move the arm into position before closing the lid. Now let's formalize this in our FMEA worksheet. For recommended action, let's enter Update Lid Design to include a flat piece of plastic that pushes arm into place when the lid is closed. Typical FMEA worksheets allow you to document who is responsible for completing this recommended action and when it is due. This will be my task to do within the next month. Now let's skip one month into the future. I have completed my task and I want to document the activity and close the loop. Let's document this on the FMA worksheet. For action taken, I'll enter flat piece of plastic added to the lid that lines up with movable arm when closed.
Because the recommended action is complete, we can now assess how much our design change affected product quality. To do this, we will still use severity, occurrence, and detection values, however, we will use the revised versions of these fields. Revised severity will remain at an 8 because this failure still results in the loss of the primary function of the coffee maker. Our design change did not change the severity level of the effect. The revised occurrence is now 1, in contrast to the original 5. Our design change is a prevention control that eliminated the occurrence of this failure. The revised detection remains a 10, because we did not add any method of detecting this failure. This now allows us to calculate a revised RPN of 80, or 8 times 1 times 10. This simple example demonstrates the advantage of FMEA, a structured approach to assessing risk and implementing measures to mitigate high risks. As suggested throughout, you can ultimately consider many functions, modes, effects, causes, and actions. Thus, FAMIAs can become extensive. For this reason, it is imperative to have a software tool to help manage and organize this process. Reliance FMEA is a tool designed and built specifically to meet your FMEA needs, from initial data entry to final reporting. Thanks for watching. Visit us at reliance.com or feel free to give us a call.